Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about Hacks Flixel and how it compares to other game engines. So I've already made a lot of videos about Hacks Flixel, what it is and how to make a game in it, but I haven't compared it to other game engines. So if you were new to game development, how does it compare to something like say Unity or Unreal or Godot? So this is what this video aims to achieve. Now, before I go on, I want to start by saying there is no such thing as the best game engine. There are loads of game engines out there. And the one that you choose to use, you should choose based on your scenario, based on your likes and dislikes, and based on the type of game or games that you want to make. So please keep that in mind as you watch this video. So let me talk about a few features of Hacks Flixel that I really appreciate. It's a 2D game engine, so it focuses on 2D and not 3D. It's free and open source, so anyone can go to GitHub, find the repository, fork it, clone it, and make whatever changes they want for their specific need. There is no GUI, so graphical user interface, no editor for tile map creation. So if you want to use Hackspixel, you can't go in as a complete beginner. You need to have some basic knowledge of programming. You need to have a code editor you're comfortable with, a tile map editor, something like Tiled or Ogmo, something you're comfortable with making tile maps in, and you need to be comfortable with the terminal or command prompt to make certain commands. It's multi-platform, so you can make a game in Hackspixel that will run on mobile, desktop, web, and even consoles. It has a small but growing community, which means that if you do adopt Hackspixel as your main game engine, you can contribute to the community and make a big difference and of course, there are many, many more features of this great game engine that I won't touch upon in this video, but if you do want to know more about it, please feel free to check out my channel where I talk about its many features. Now let's talk about a few other popular game engines. So many of these you would have heard of before. Unity, Unreal, Godot, Game Maker, Phaser, Heaps, Monogame, and at the bottom we have something called Love 2D, which you might not have heard of, but it's quite popular. So. Let's talk about how Hacks Flixel compares to these other game engines. Now, when it comes to Unity and Unreal, these game engines are 3D. I mean, Unity, you can do 2D with it, but you can make triple A quality games with them. So it's not really fair to compare these two engines with Flixel as that's more for 2D indie games, it's not for triple A. So if you want to make a triple A game, Go with Unity. If not, if you're messing about, want to make a jam or an indie game, HF is good for you. Now, Godot, like Hackspixel, is open source, but again, Godot can do 3D as well as 2D. Even though the 2D in Godot is really good, I wouldn't really compare it to Hackspixel because it also, like Unity and Unreal, has an editor, which I guess you need for a 3D game. There's a lot of stuff in it, like a tile map editor. It's got its own physics engine. So there's a lot that comes with it. But also Godot 4 is moving away from OpenGL and going more towards Vulkan. Now, for those of you who are watching this video who don't know much about rendering and OpenGL and Vulkan, basically OpenGL is something that is in a lot of systems, is in browsers, a lot of old devices and phones, and Vulkan is something that's newer. Um, with Godot moving more towards Vulkan, it's pushing more current tech, and so older devices won't be supported by Godot going forward and maybe even browsers. So I know Godot do want to support OpenGL in the future, but currently with Godot 4, they're only going to support Vulkan. So like Unreal and Unity, Godot is pushing towards the high-end modern AAA 3D rendering techniques that Hackspixel isn't really doing as a 2D engine. So it's not really fair to compare HF with these three top tier engines. So if we skim that list down, we have GameMaker, Phaser Heaps, Monogame and Love 2D. So let's talk about Game Maker. Game Maker, I would say, is the engine to go to if you want to start making games out of the list here. If you're new to game development and want to just try it out, see what it's like, go for Game Maker Studio. It comes with its own editor. It comes with a lot of things built in. The programming isn't too taxing. It's quite a simple language to learn and to get to grips with, and it's free. So if we look at the pricing tier, of Game Maker Studio, there is a free tier that someone can jump in and use straight away. But there are also paid tiers. As you can see, there's a developer tier that supports desktop, mobile, and web. 
that costs 99 US dollars and for console it costs a bit more. It's not open source which makes sense because it has to support console which if you support console you ha kind of have to keep some code hidden from the user. You don't want to share a lot of console information between competitors. So the code for Game Maker is closed sourced. You can't customize it to your needs. You get what you get and that's pretty much it. Moving on to Phaser. Phaser is a game engine that you can make great games with but it's only for browsers. So if you want to make a game that will work on a desktop or mobile browser, use Phaser. I know there are ways to put web games on desktop. So there's something called Electron, which will turn a web game into a desktop application. But ideally it's better to have an engine that can focus on the platform that you want. So that's where Phaser differs from Hackspixel. Phaser is web only, whereas Hackspixel, you can do web, you can do mobile, you can do de desktop. You can focus on these platforms natively. So that's something to think about if you want to make a game that you know is just going to be on the browser and you want to focus on that. So now let's move on to Heaps. Heaps is also a great game engine. It was developed by the person who invented the Hacks programming language and is used to make a lot of great games, Dead Cells being one of them. Heaps is free and open source. It doesn't really have a GUI unless you're making a 3D game. And Heaps also supports 3D, so it does 2D and 3D games, which is awesome. The main difference I would say between Hacks, Flixel and Heaps is that Heaps is a bit more lower level than Hacks, Flixel. Hacks, Flixel makes it a bit more easier to do common things. And there is a great paragraph that describes that in the Heaps Discord channel. And I've taken a screenshot of it. So it says here, Heaps is a low level, flexible engine made in house by Shiro Games. And it's not for people who don't know how to work with low level engines, especially not for people who have used Unity, Game Maker, Unreal or Godot. So it's basically saying you need to know what you're doing if you want to use Heaps. You can't just jump into it and start using it, which you can do with Hackspixel. If you have an IDE or a code editor and you know how to do a bit of programming, if you know how to use the command prompt or terminal, you can go ahead and use Hackspixel and make a game in it fairly quickly. You can't do that with heaps based on what this paragraph is saying. So now let's move on to Monogame. A Monogame is another popular game engine. If you look at some of the games that I have made with it, Streets of Rage, Mercenary Kings, Scars of the Shogun, Fairs, these are popular indie games that have been made with this engine. It's a C-sharp based engine, which is not for beginners. You need to know how to code, you need to have an editor. And this engine is similar to heaps in the fact that this is also a bit lower level than Hackspixel. So I did some research. I searched in Google for Monogame versus Hackspixel and a community post came up, which does a good job of explaining the difference between the two. Here's what it says. So I'm looking at the second paragraph. Think about things like collisions, particles, animations, camera systems, states, scenes, and tile maps. Hackspixel provides all those, but in Monogame, you'd have to make your own implementations or find someone else's. So similar to Heaps, with Monogame, you'd have to be more involved in the making of the game. Whereas with Hacks Flixel, these things are provided to you already. So there's less work you have to do to be able to get a game out. Now you could be someone who wants to have full control over the particles, collisions, the camera system. And if that's you, go ahead and check out Monogame, check out Heaps. There are examples out there of people who have done these things and you can go ahead and use their code. Moving on now to Love 2D. But before we go ahead and talk about Love, let's talk about something called Default, which I was meant to put in this list, but I didn't. So Default is another 2D game engine. It's free and open source, and a bit like Game Maker has its own editor. So if we scroll down and look at this image, you can see it's got an editor. It uses a scripting language called Lua, and it is cross-platform. So you can make a game in Default, and it will run on all these systems. Now I should say that I don't personally have experience with default. In fact, I don't personally have experience with a lot of these game engines apart from Phaser, but I have done a lot of reading and research and that's how I've come to these conclusions. Anyway, back to default. So default is a great game engine. If you want to have something that's free and open source, have its own editor and be cross-platform. And the only reason I would say you should check out Hackspixel over default is the fact that Flixel is written in hacks and you can write 
in the Hacks programming language and compile it to Lua, which is what this uses. So if you use Flixel and know how to use Hacks, you can technically program a default game as well, but it doesn't work the other way around. Okay, and finally, let's talk about Love 2D or Love 2D. I'm not sure the best way to pronounce it. It's got an umlaut on the O, so I'm not sure if it's Love or Love. But anyway, Love is a 2D game engine. It's open source and does not have a GUI, so you would need to have your own and you need to know how to program before you can use this. Love also uses the Lua scripting language exactly like default. So the same thing I said about default applies to Love. If you know how to use Hacks, you can compile that to Lua, but Lua cannot go to Hacks. But if you don't really care about that advantage, if you don't really care about going from Hacks to Lua, then apart from that, I can't think of a reason why you would choose Hacks Flixel over Love 2D. Again, I'm not sure the ins and outs of the Love API. I don't know if it's easier to do a collision in Hacks Flixel or Love, or if it's easier to make particles or physics in either engine. But from what I can see here, it looks simple, just like Flixel, to create things for a game or, or to create a game. Choosing between Love 2D, Mono Game, Game Maker Studio, Hacks Flixel, there's only small differences. I mean, okay, so Game Maker will cost you some money. The rest of them are free. But apart from the money aspect, having a, a UI, programming in C-sharp, JavaScript, or Lua, there really isn't much difference, and it's down to your preference. Do you want to code in Hacks? Do you want to code in C-sharp? Because C-sharp is also what is used in Unity, and you can jump between Monogame and Unity if you know C-sharp. Do you want to use JavaScript? It's really up to you. But I would say, as someone who's flicking through the showcases of the game engines, I mean, Game Maker has some great games showcased, Monogame has some great games showcased, so does Hacks Pixel. So you can't really go wrong with what you choose. It's just important to have good reasons for your choices. And if you don't have a good reason, try them all out or pick one at random. It's up to you. Basically, if you're making a 2D game, you can't go wrong with any of these. And that's it. I hope I've helped you to decide on what game engine to use if you're brand new to game development or if you're not brand new and you've made games before with these engines, I hope I've introduced you to more game engines and why you should probably check out or do some research on other engines. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like as usual, and I will see you in the next video.